So the guideline proposed by the European Commission consists of six steps. The first one is to prepare the ground for the adaptation, and which requires basic information, administration, cooperation with relevant authorities to create and develop the strategy. The expected impacts and activities for the adaptation strategy are identified by a team of experts and followed by an estimated of the human and financial resources required. Potential sources of long-term funding have to be found in order to have economic support to cover the costs of the adaptation process. It is also very important to raise awareness and communicate with the public about the climate change emergency and the need to adapt to it. The second step is to identify the impacts, risks and vulnerabilities from the past and the ones that we might suffer in the future trying to adapt the specific territory. First, they identify and take into account socioeconomic factors, knowledge gaps, uncertainties and cross-border issues to find a way to address as many impacts as possible and try to cope with them. Once the evaluation is done, the adaptation options are defined in order to address the identified problems. To do this, all possible information on adaptation options, good practices and existing measures is explored and investigated. The options are described to detail so that you can compare between them. Step 4 is in order to compare these options, as said before, to be able to choose the most appropriate one and the most effective one in the conditions given with the territory. An evaluation is carried out. By analyzing its measures, they define the time, cost, benefit and effort required for each option. Trade-offs and synergies are assets in order to achieve the best coordination possible between policy areas or sectors. Most appropriate ones are prioritized and selected through a multi-criteria analysis. Political approval is responsible for approving the document so that it can proceed to the next stage. Next step is implementation and it develops an action plan that sets out what needs to be done to turn adaptation actions into measures, specifying when and for whom they are targeted and having sufficient resources to be able to implement them. To develop this plan, one must first identify and make sure of the existing instruments are being used for the adaptation and if needed, create new ones, while identifying the key instruments and trying to integrate them. They should also collaborate and seek agreements with stakeholders responsible for their implementation. The final step in this phase is to elaborate an action plan, which must summarize the adaptation options chosen and provide a guide sheet for the implementation. Next step would be monitoring and evaluation, which are very important because it tells us how effective our measures in practice are and it can also help us identify and they are actually reducing which risk improving climate resilience. They are not, we need to take action and try to come up with some new measures that will do so. In order to evaluate the efficiency of the strategy, identifying weaknesses and shortcomings is very important so we can solve and treat them. However, we're still in the early stages of understanding how to adapt to climate change how to reduce risks and more efficiently and increase resilience. And we still have so many goals ahead to achieve in this. Therefore, much work remains to be done in order to be able to develop an adaptation strategies that are gonna be actually efficient in front of the problem that we have with global warming.